Okay, so let's take a look at chapter 9, number 23 here. Um, so this is asking about using sigma notation. Um, and uh, we talked about this a little bit in class. If in A and B, A and B ask you to do something different than C, D, E, F, G. So first let's just look at A and B. So A is already written in sigma notation. I'll put the 9 up here. Uh, and we're doing 12 times 3 fifths to the K. So this really is the same thing as 12 times 3 fifths to the 0. And then I got to plug in to the first. And if I just keep it going all the way up, I'll do the last two terms. 12 times 3 fifths to the 8 plus 12 times 3 fifths to the uh, ninth. Yeah. Okay, now, um, see that right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so this right here is uh, is our series. It goes up to nine. Uh, it goes up to k equals nine. And if you think about it, since there's a zero term here, really this is my this term here is a one. This term is a two, and so this term right here would really be my tenth term. So in this case, n is ten. And notice that each term, I, each successive term, is just a taking the previous one and multiplying it by 3 fifths. So there's a common ratio of 3 fifths. And my first term is just 12 times 3 fifths to the 0, which is 12 times 1. So it's 12. So this is a geometric series. And it's finite because there are only 10 terms. And uh, at this point, we've developed a trick for geometric finite series, getting the sum. The sum is always going to be the first term, 1 minus the common ratio to the n, where n is the number of terms. And then I'm going to divide that by 1 minus the common ratio. You could get the whole thing by just taking this, calling it s, then taking 3 fifths s, and then subtracting one equation from the other, and then factoring and dividing, which would lead you to this formula anyway. So if we plug in the numbers we have, a1 is 12. I've got 1 minus 3 fifths to the 10th all over 1 minus 3 fifths. And let's see, do I have a calculator sitting around here? I do. So let's see what we get when we plug all that in. 12 times 1 minus 0.6 to the 10th. And then divided by 1 minus 0.6. So that comes out to be 29.8186, roughly. OK, hope that helps. Uh, let's take a look at B. So in B, it's another one that they give you sigma notation already. 7 from 4 to 7 of 5n. So this one, I'm just going to write this all out. It's 5 times 4, because we're starting with 4, plus 5 times 5 plus 5 times 6, plus 5 times 7. Now, I'm not going to bother trying to develop a formula for this, because that's easy enough. It's 20 plus 25 plus 30 plus 35. And I believe if you add that all together, it's 50 plus 60, 110. OK, now C, D, E, F, G, they ask you to write those things using sigmas. So uh, let's take a look. Really what you have to do is figure out the pattern from one number to the next. If I look at 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus dot 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 plus 361, hopefully you realize that that's the same thing as 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus dot dot dot. And 361 is actually the same thing as 19 squared. So the general term here is an n squared term. right? Actually, I'll write it as k. I think a lot of times when you use sigma, you end up using k's. So I'm going to write this as the sum of a bunch of k squareds. And the first thing that I ended up with was when k was 1. And the last one that I ended up with was when k was 19. So this would probably be the easiest way of writing out that summation. There are other ways of writing it. Like, for example, if I did this, if k was 0 first, 
uh, then my first term was really k plus 1 squared, right? Because if I plug in 0, then I get 1 squared. And then the last term I would want would be 18. So you can kind of see there's more than one way of writing this. Um, uh, usually there's one easy way, but almost every time you come up with an easy way, somebody else thinks that this way might be easier for some reason. So um, just because you have a different answer from someone else doesn't mean they're, one of them's wrong. Uh, let's look at D. So D, 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus dot 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 plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. So when you look at this one, if I rewrite this, it's 8 times, or er, plus 8 times a half, and then that one gets cut in half again, so it's squared, and then 8 times a half cubed plus dot dot dot, and then 1 fourth turns out to be 8 times a half to the fourth. Is that right? Nope. Squared cube. Let's see. 8 times a half to the fifth is 1 fourth, I believe. Let me double check that. 8 divided by 2. Yeah. So we need 8 times 1 half to the sixth for this last term. So really, the only one that I've left out here is this one. So I might as well put it there. So 1 eighth is the same thing as this. 8 divided by 2 to the 6. Just double check. Yeah, yeah, we're good there. OK, so there's seven terms right there. Um, and uh, let's see. If I write this as 8 times a half to the k, right? then really what I did was I started with k equals 0, and I ended with k equals 6. So that would probably be one of the easier ways of writing that one, I think. Uh, let's see, what else? Do I want to write that a different way? No, I think that's probably the simplest way. Uh, you could also write it like this. This would be another common way of writing it. If I started with k equals 1 and went up to 7, then what I'm doing is 8 times a half to the k minus 1. Some students think of it that way instead. So, because then that says, what's your first term? Oh, plug in k equals 1. Okay, E, the stuff that's given, negative 7, negative 1, uh, up through, let's see, plus 5, plus 11, plus dot, 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 plus 53. So if you look at this one, th this one here turned out to be geometric. This one, there's a common difference every time. You're always adding 6. So it's plus 6, plus 6, plus 6. That makes this one arithmetic. OK, so uh, let's write this out. The first term is negative 7. And then the next term is the same thing as negative 7 plus 6. And then the next term is negative 7 plus a couple of 6's. And then negative 7 plus a few more 6's. Right? And if we keep going, 53 turns out to be negative 7 plus 10 6's. So I could write this one. Now the general term is negative 7 plus a certain number of 6's. So it depends on how you want to think about it. You could think of it as. I'm just saying I'm adding a bunch of sixes to it. And the first number of sixes I added, I added zero sixes originally. And then at the end, I added 10 sixes. Uh, some students like to think in terms of that a sub n term, which is this one, negative 7 plus k minus 1 times 6. If you think of it that way, then the first k you want is the first term you want here for multiples of 6 is 0. So you'd have to have this be 1. So if you set that equal to be 1, now your first term is 7. And if you set this to be 11 at the end, then your last term will be uh, 10 times 6 right here, plus negative 7. So either of these would be OK. For f, let's see, what was f? 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus dot, 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 plus n plus 1 squared. So this one is the same thing as 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared all the way up to n plus 1 squared. So if I write out this, 
um, we'll call it k squared. And the very first term I plugged in for k was 1, and the last term I plugged in was n plus 1. I think that's just got to be the simplest way of writing that thing. Um, and then let's see, we've got g here. g is 6 minus 12 plus 24 minus 48 plus dot, dot, dot. And it goes on forever in this case. So this one, it's 6. And then to get from one to the next, we end up multiplying it by negative 2. And then to get to the next one, we multiply it by negative 2 again. And so on. 6, negative 2 cubed, plus dot, dot, dot. And the nth term would be 6 times negative 2 to the n minus 1, I suppose. And then we could keep going if we wanted to. So in sigma form, uh, I've got a 6 times negative 2 to the k minus 1. That's my general term. The first k that I plug that I want to plug in is 1 because then that makes this 0 for the exponent and the whole thing becomes just 6. And then when I plug in 2, I'll get to the first power and I'll get that second term now. And then the last term I want to plug in is infinity, really, because this keeps going on forever. Another way of writing this, if you prefer it this way, you still need a general term, 6 times negative 2, but maybe you say, I'm just raising it to the k. And so the very first k you want is 0 in this case. And then the last one you want is still infinity. You don't bother putting infinity minus 1 because it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so, okay, I hope that helps.